Hello again and welcome to another Lawrence Academy screencast. Today we're going to be talking about set builder and interval notation. And you guys are going to be begin uh, talking about domain and range in your classes if you haven't already. And the way we describe domain and range, we typically use either set builder and interval notation. And this will be a short guide to get you started on each of them. So let's start with set builder notation. Set builder is tricky for many of you because it often uses inequalities and it always uses braces. There are also, uh, in some instances, uh, some unique uh, and probably unfamiliar symbols that you'll have to know uh, in order to use set builder notation. Um, one example of a set builder notation I can use for, let's say, a domain. So here is a, an example of set builder, um, and some of you might be thinking, what, uh, what is this? Um, and this actually is read as x such that 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to, uh, I'm sorry, is less than 5. So here you can see that this vertical line right here, uh, that is read as such that. Okay, so when we're using set builder notation, the braces uh, open and close um, the notation. And we use x or y such that and then some, some domain or range. Here is another example of a domain that will be fairly common when we're doing these problems. This one uh, will be confusing if it's the first time that you're seeing it because there are two symbols here that you probably don't recognize. These two symbols right here. We remember x such that um, this little weird looking e, uh, which is almost like a c with a line through the middle, uh, that just means is an element of. And if that still isn't very helpful for you, uh, that, that can also be read as is contained in, um, is part of, um, and that weird looking r, uh, which is kind of, it's almost like a paragraph symbol, but an r instead, that means the real numbers. So basically that tells you that x can be any number from positive to negative infinity. So this one could be a little bit confusing at first uh, because you have some symbols that you might not recognize, um, but it will be a, a fairly common solution where x can be any real number. So this equation reads x such that x is contained or is an element of the real numbers. Now let's see if we can do one on our own. So here I'm just going to write out a uh, uh, set builder notation and I want to see if you can dictate what it tells you. So here uh, we have our braces, we have the x such that, and in here basically tells us what we're working with. So we have x such that negative 3 is less than x. If you can get that, that's pretty good for the first time seeing it. So that has been uh, a quick crash course on how to use set builder notation. Uh, there's another method uh, which should be a little bit quicker uh, because there's not as much writing. Um, and that method is called the interval notation. Interval notation is quicker as I mentioned, and uses brackets or parentheses and kind of looks like you're writing coordinate points. In this case, the parentheses and brackets uh, are very similar, um, but it does matter which one you choose to use. So if you see a bracket, that tells you that the value uh, next to the bracket is included in your, uh, your domain or range. Um, a pretty good indicator uh, whether and if you're going to choose to use a bracket or a parenthesis uh, will be if the inequality is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Um, if you see that or equal to uh, part on the bottom, that's going to tell you that that value uh, is included in your domain or range. If the value is not included, that's where you'll be using your parenthesis. 
So here, um, I would say that that would be if you just have uh, uh, greater than or less than. Um, so there's no or equal to. That means that that value is not going to be included. Um, so how this works is you are using some form of brackets and or parentheses, and you have, let's just, let's just start with parentheses. There's a lower value, there's a lower bound to your domain or range, comma, upper bound. Right, and then you close off the, uh, the interval. Okay, so let's take a look at a more tangible example. So to assist us with this, I've included a number line, uh, just so we have something to work with. Uh, and here we can see that this problem is going to range from negative 2 to positive 3. Um, and let's say it, that open circle there means that 2 is not included um, in our domain or in whatever we're working with. Uh, but 3 is, because that is a closed dot. So this is the value we're working with. So our lower bound here is 2, and our upper bound is 3. So when we're doing interval notation, if it's included, that means we get a bracket. If it's not included, we get a parenthesis. So the negative 2 is not included, so we have a parenthesis here. And 3 is included, so we have a bracket here. So this was a lot quicker. There's a lot less writing. Um, but you do have to be careful on whether or not you're going to use parentheses or brackets. As was the case for set builder notation, there's a common example that you'll see when you're doing domain and range problems, and we're going to take a look at it on the next slide. So once again, I'm going to employ a number line just so we have uh, something to measure against. Um, and here, it looks like x could be any number. So if you recall, this was the one where we say that x is contained in the, all, in the real numbers. Um, it's going to look a little bit differently uh, using the interval notation. So this essentially, from here that way, that goes all the way to negative infinity. Um, from here, from 0 to the right, that's going to take us to positive infinity. So using interval notation, we have a lower bound and we have an upper bound. Uh, and we are going to use parentheses to do these. We're using parentheses because negative infinity is never actually going to be reached. And same thing with positive infinity. Um, so that value is not going to be included in your domain or range. All right, so this, once again, is a little bit quicker. Um, so when you're dealing with something... Um, that goes one way. Um, if it goes off forever one way, that's going to go towards negative or positive infinity. So if you have something like x is greater than or equal to 3, that tells us that 3 is going to be our lower bound, and it's going to go off to positive infinity. So in this short time, we've already discussed the two methods that you'll be using to discuss domain and range. We have set builder and we have interval notation. As is customary, since we've gone over this together, I'm going to give you two examples to try on your own. So here you have two problems, one of each, uh, using set builder. Uh, we remember to use your braces and your inequalities, um, and also using interval notation. You will get better the more you practice these, so be sure to keep working hard. Thank you so much for watching. And have a good day. It's not a great smiley face, but uh, you'll you get it.